So, thank you for that introduction. I am Ellie Crissa. I'm delighted to be with you today to present the Rotary Young Citizen Awards 2018 in Torquay. I was going to say sunny Torquay, but never mind. <laughs> Still Torquay, isn't it? These awards, as many of you know, honour the achievements of young people who've all done something extraordinary, and this bunch are no different. There'll, there won't be a dry eye in the house by the end of it, I can tell you. As it said in the introduction, I presented these awards when they started in 2007. Can't quite believe we're in the 11th year, and it seems to go quicker and quicker each year. It's crazy, isn't it? Um, each year, Rotary Clubs across Britain and Ireland nominate youngsters for the awards. The winners are here with us today, and uh, as I said, you're about to meet some very inspirational young people. They've all been interviewed leading up to this by BBC News. Let's find out more about them this morning. Now, the problem of homelessness has really hit the headlines recently with increasing numbers of rough sleepers across the UK reaching record levels, including some people actually dying in the recent freezing temperatures in uh, London and Edinburgh. Aged just 11, Joseph Cox has decided to take action to do something about it. His efforts were recognised by the Rotary Club of Leith, who nominated him for this Young Citizen Award. Here's his story. Hi. Hey, yeah. My name's Joseph. My name's Joseph Cox. I'm 11 years old. And I started to talk to the street because every day you can see homeless people. I'm collecting socks for homeless people. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if you'd like something. Yeah, yeah. So I started this project to help raise awareness and collect things to give to homeless people uh, so I can make their lives better and hopefully get them out of the streets. It just goes to show that there is people out there that care. And it was good to see them at that age. They're not sort of like slagging people off that are homeless, but they're actually trying to help them. Thank you. When Joseph uh, first came to me and asked if uh, the school wanted to, to help support him with this, I was absolutely thrilled that a young person would be so thoughtful um, and you know really had a plan of action to try and do something about it. Joseph asked if the school could be a collection point for uh, the socks and so uh, we had a number of parcels being sent to the school from all over the world. Socks, pants, hats, gloves. Um, buffs and sleeping bags. Joseph set a target of 300 pairs of socks that we thought we might get locally from within his school and the community. Um, at the moment we've distributed 2,000 pairs of socks that we know about um, and from all, that's been donated from all over the world. I set up Joseph's Facebook page for him um, but he's been writing all the posts and I've been putting them on and it's gone, it's gone viral. So within 24 hours, we had over 30,000 views of his Facebook page worldwide. When I was seven and I went into town, I didn't see very many, but over the years, Dave, there's more and more and more. So I just want to do something. I want to um, end homelessness in Scotland and hope maybe the UK. Hi. Bye bye. Congratulations. You look chuffed to bits to be here. How do you feel? It's really excited and happy that I've won this award. And Mum's in the audience, isn't she? Yeah. Where is she? Give her a wave. There she is, being supportive. <laughs> Why did you decide to get involved and, and help homeless people? What, what was, do you remember the moment when you suddenly thought, you know what, I want to do something about this? Well, I was on my way back from a school trip and I saw some homeless people and I felt really bad for them. So when I got home, I told my mum and she got in contact with Bethany Christian Trust. And they said, oh, well, nobody donates their socks or underwear. They always donate their jumpers, jackets and trousers. So I started to collect from the socks. So it's going back to basics, isn't it? What a sensible idea. And we saw you chatting to some people who are living on the streets there in Edinburgh. What sort of things do they say to you about the situations they're in and the work that you do to help? They're really happy about the work that I do. And when they get f um, new socks, they're really happy and they smell them because they've not smelled anything fresh for ages. <laughs> How does it make you feel to be able to, to do something really useful to help? It makes me feel really 
happy and proud of myself that I can go and do something like this. You should be proud of yourself. Now, your Facebook page had a massive response, didn't it? What did you think of that? It, it was just mind-blowing how many views we got in 24 hours. It's just a lot. And I'm sure it will continue to grow and grow. Joseph, very well-deserved congratulations. Thank you. Our next Rotary Young Citizen Award goes to 20-year-old Rebecca Hinton. At the age of 16, Rebecca was so deeply concerned by the desperate lack of children's clothing in her local deprived community of West Bowling that she set up the Children's Clothes Bank. She was nominated for the award by the Rotary Club of West Bradford. Let's find out more about Rebecca. My name's Rebecca Hinton. Um, I am 20 years old. I live in Bradford. Um, so I live West Bowling uh, and it's in the bottom 1% of deprivation in the UK. Um, so there is an awful lot of need really, an awful lot of child poverty. I was 16 when I started Children's Clothes Bank so a lot of it was seeing children at my own school, uh, going to school without just basic necessities and also seeing children at local primary schools. There were families who for example they'd buy their children shoes and they'd have to buy it several sizes too big uh, because that was the only way that they could afford to have shoes on their feet um, for the next year uh, and seeing that was just really quite upsetting um, and just totally unnecessary. Uh, we live in a country where there is actually that we have an excess of clothes um, and so I just started communicating with a few people, a couple of teachers at my school um, and also some friends, uh, just about the possibility of them donating some of their clothes from their children um, and then from that well thought well, why don't we make this into an organised scheme and have a referral system whereby schools, uh, family centres um, and charities are able to refer people here um, and it's just grown from that really. We support and give out clothes to families in need so I think we're the closest call, I think we're the only call for some families. Um, I think it's making a real difference in, in this community and I think it's a great thing that Rebecca has set up. It's a real great need and it's not just families from foreign shores that come, it's literally people on your doorstep. Families are choosing whether to put shoes on the children's feet or give them a meal. She had a great idea, a wonderful idea, because it helps a lot of families like, like me, um, saving money on clothes. On a tight budget it's very very useful because we can, we can then buy food since um, Sanya. I stopped working, so we live only on my husband's wage, minimum wage. I feel grateful towards Rebecca, um, and I don't have words enough. <laughs> Sorry. I, mean, I don't. Congratulations, Rebecca. Thank you. It was quite quite an emotional response from that lady at the end. How does it feel when you see that? I, I just feel very privileged, really, to be able to know these people, to be able to help. Um, we also have the most amazing stories of people coming. Um, lots of refugees, people from over 25 different countries who we've helped. Um, and to just some of the stories, you know, people have come literally on the back of lorries. Um, and to just be able to help in the tiniest way um, is a real privilege. Um, it makes me feel very honoured. Now, they say the best, the best ideas are the simplest ones. I, mean, I have children, they grow out of things very quickly, and I always think I want to give these clothes to somebody locally, but there isn't the mechanism. Do you think that's why it's been so successful? Yeah, I think so. You know, children grow out of clothes so quickly, um, and they are quite expensive. Um, if there are people who are either on minimum wage or just don't have any money, um, yeah, often refugees, then actually to just be able to pass on those clothes um, so that children have something warm um, to wear, it, it's really, really simple, but um, really works. And you've expanded it out now to other things as well? Yeah, so we also provide prams, um, cots, um, Moses baskets, bottles. Uh, we have baby packs where an expectant mum can come in and we have the whole pack which has got the stuff needed, sort of baby grows, bottles, nappies. What does winning this award mean to you, Rebecca? Uh, it means so much, but um, I think a lot of it as well is just acknowledging Bradford, where I come from, acknowledging West Bowling, and also the volunteers, you know, some of the people we saw on the screen just now. Um, I think to be able to sort of appreciate what they do as well, um, and all the work that they put into it, um, it's amazing. Congratulations, well done. Thank you so much.
Our next award goes to Dale Rawlins from Gloucester, who set up a disability football team when he was just 14. He then went on to open up a social enterprise sports shop to create employment opportunities for players when he was 16. Now, he's 20 and he runs the largest pan-disability football club in the UK with 13 adult and three children's sides. He set up one of only five disabled ladies' sides in the country and a deaf team with over 130 regular players. He was nominated for the award by the Rotary Club of Gloucester. Here's a report about Dale when he was put forward for a BBC Midlands Sports Unsung Hero Award in December last year. Good Ed. Good challenge, Reese. That's all right. That's all right. At 20 years of age, Dale Rawlings from Gloucester is the youngest contender for this year's BBC Midlands Sports Unsung Hero. At least once a week, he holds these training sessions for young people with all sorts of disabilities. Nathan Ridley has severe epilepsy, but thanks to Dale, he not only plays football, he's also qualified as a coach. Dale's one hell of a person. I love him. He's a great coach, a great friend. I've gained skills uh, in areas I didn't know I had, uh, like teamwork, leadership, uh, um, self-esteem. Dale has been organising this since the age of 14 and during that time it's estimated that he's helped around 400 disadvantaged youngsters. But his passion for helping those less fortunate goes beyond the pitch. He set up this social enterprise, a sports shop in Gloucester, which gives jobs to those who come to the football. It's very rewarding when they move on and they, they learn and they, they learn every day, every day. And it's more rewarding sometimes when the customer learns. And sometimes people take something away from here that they didn't think they were getting when they came in. And they think, actually, my views on a person like that have kind of changed. Scott Johnson is one of the managers. Uh, people in the street kind of stare, stare at me because obviously the way I walk. And like they'll perceive me as like an ordinary person. I don't get judged, which is nice. In 2015, Dale won Gloucester's Sports Coach of the Year and the City's Young Ambassador Awards. Now it's his chance to be recognised across the Midlands and maybe even nationally. Kevin Reid, BBC Midlands Today, Gloucester. Congratulations. How do you feel to be receiving this award? Um, very honoured. Very privileged. Um, I think it presents an opportunity not only for myself but for the company on a larger scale to get our name out there a little bit because we want to expand in the future. You've done a huge amount for disabled people in sport. What motivated you to get into this? Um, when I was much younger, when I was 12, my dad set up a uh, disability at the time titled football, se uh, uh, football session at our local club, which I played for, and I went along as a little 12 year old just to join in and make up the numbers. Um, when I turned 14, I took the section on. The section had one team at the time um, with about six or seven players who were all about my age. Um, and I kind of took that on, got to 16 and I was finishing school, I was going to do my A-levels, given all these options of uni, what degree I wanted to do next, etc, etc. And a lot of these boys who I saw were friends at the time were, um, had nothing, they were just leaving school and they were just going to end up in the next care home, in the next foster home and whatever, whatever was on their pathway next. So I thought it's probably about right we do something for these boys instead of worrying about myself too much. So I um, set up the social enterprise gave a couple of them jobs, got them qualified as football coaches, and as soon as that shop opened, um, we, the numbers started to grow, and now we've given over 400 people their first opportunity of playing sport, employed 13 people. How satisfying do you find it? I mean, you're clearly incredibly passionate about it. Um, yeah, I find it very satisfying. Like I said on the video, I find it more satisfying whenever people get something out of it. Um, for me, when people walk through that shop door, and they take away something that they didn't think they were going to take away, not necessarily a product or a cheap item they've managed to find in the, in the rummage, but um, meeting someone like Scott, who's in the audience, and gaining a different, view, a different view of that kind of person, which maybe they thought before wouldn't happen. Well, congratulations. Very well deserved. Thank you.
Our next award winner, 16-year-old Ryan Montgomery, certainly has his finger on the pulse when it comes to teaching potentially life-saving skills to his community. He became interested in first aid when he was 12 and completed his first of many courses with St Andrew's First Aid. Since then, he's run several campaigns to provide defibrillators in public spaces, including collecting 300 mobile phones to pay for the units. Now he runs his own charity called Castorfin Emergency Response, which he set up last year. Let's find out more about Ryan. My name is Ryan McGovern. I am 16 years old. Um, I absolutely love first aid. I started my very first course uh, when I was 12 um, and from there I progressed. Um, so very first basic CPR course um, and I loved every minute of that um, and I just knew I had the passion to go and do it um, and it does save lives. These are life-saving skills um, and it can happen to anyone. Um, so the more you know about it, um, the better the chances of survival for the person, the better chances uh, you're going to manage that incident a bit better till the ambulance arrives. CPR, uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, uh, consists of two main things. I set up Christophany Emergency Response in April last year. Um, from being only me, we've now got lots of volunteers about um, a year later. Um, we set it up because there was no project in Christophan like that. Um, and we've seen the need for it. Our main drive is always community resilience and training uh, in the community to teach anybody from very young to very old. He's done a lot of nights with the Rotary Club doing training, you know, help training out there. Um, a lot of the training for um, the primary schools, brownies, guides, um, you know, all the different local communities. We also have to support many events in Castorfin, so we have um, a very large event called Castorfin Fair that ever, um, happens every two years. We do all different things for that and we also provide first aid cover. So I taught uh, the teachers at Craig Mountain High School, my own school, um, and we taught the, the pupils and teachers how to do the very basics. Um, so we taught them how to do CPR, we taught them how to do choking, um, how to deal with scenarios and how to use the, the defibrillator. We have two in the school. Um, and not many people knew how to use them and where they were. But once we had done these awareness sessions and uh, the training, we gave out certificates that enabled people to get a wee bit more confidence. It's made a big difference because I think he's a, he's a good role model for the younger children that he goes and talks to. He just has a, a real community spirit and he just wants to help anybody and everybody that he can in whichever way possible. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Don't we have a lot of smart young citizens this year? I feel absolutely put to shame by these very smart outfits. How do you feel to be receiving this award, Ryan? It's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, you don't always get a thank you, but when you do and when you get an award, it's absolutely an amazing feeling for the work you do. You are incredibly passionate about this cause, aren't you? We chatted a bit yesterday and it just came through. Why? I just absolutely love it. It is such a life-saving skill that Anybody can do, it's so easy, um, and when you know it, it's, it's just p easy to put into practice. You have to do it, um, otherwise, it's, their chances of survival if they're in cardiac arrest are really slipping by the minute and by second. And it does work. I know, because my friend did it on someone and saved a life. It works. It does. When you have a defibrillator there, it is so much better. It's something like 70% it's increasing by using a defibrillator. It's just so easy to use. The defibrillator talks to you. It reassures you in a calm and reassuring voice. It keeps everybody calm around you. And when you have a lot of people around you, the, their chances of survival will increase um, if everybody is doing CPR. Look how passionate you are. Everybody's learned a little something today, haven't we? Now, you want to go on to do this professionally, of course, don't you? Yeah, I would absolutely love to join the ambulance services. The emergency services are a brilliant line of work. Um, I really want to join the, the air ambulance. Um, it's just a fast and effective way to, to bring that critical care into somebody who has had the worst trauma of their life. Nothing's going to stop you, is it, Ryan? Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Our next award goes to 19-year-old Andrew Davies. At the age of 13, Andrew was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukaemia, a rare and rapidly spreading disease. 
He spent months in Sheffield Children's Hospital undergoing four courses of chemotherapy and a bone marrow transplant. Upon finding out that the cost of the bone marrow transplant was £150,000, he decided to raise the same amount so that other young lives could be saved. His fundraising now stands at almost £138,000 and he's planning an event this summer to reach his target. He was nominated for the award by the Rotary Satellite Club of Chesterfield. In November 2016, Andrew joined five other youngsters and Matt Baker from BBC's The One Show for the Rickshaw Challenge for Children in Need, cycling 474 miles from Jedburgh to London and raising £4.2 million for the charity. Unfortunately, Andrew is unable to join us here in Torquay, but he has sent us a message by mobile phone. Hi. My name's Andrew Davis and I would like to say thank you to Rotary for receiving this year's Young Citizen of the Year Award. I'm really sorry that I'm not going to be able to attend the awards in Torquay, however, I'm absolutely delighted to have been honoured with the award. After I was diagnosed with leukaemia in September 2012, I decided I wanted to say thank you to Sheffield Children's Hospital for the amazing work they were doing in treating me. I set myself a fundraising target of £150,000 and I'm delighted to be able to say that today I've raised nearly £138,000. Much of this money has come as a result of Rotary helping out me and supporting me in my fundraising journey. So once again I would like to say a huge thank you to Rotary both in my local region in Sheffield and on a wider scale for the award and for the support that they've given me. Thank you. Andrew Davis. Now we come to the winner of this year's Rotary Young Citizen Wheel Power Sports Award, presented jointly by Rotary and the British wheelchair sport charity Wheel Power. The award goes to 15-year-old Abby Brakewell. Abby has a muscle-wasting disease and a spinal cord syrinx, which has resulted in her needing a wheelchair. But Abby, who has always loved sport, did not let this stop her. She started playing wheelchair tennis two years ago and has just been selected as one of only two girls amongst seven youngsters picked for the Tennis Foundation's new programme to produce future world-class wheelchair tennis players. She's also president of her Interact Club at her school and was nominated for the award by the Rotary Club of Long Eaton. Here's a report about here earlier this week, which was on BBC East Midlands Today. Now we're going to stay uh, with sport for a little bit longer because a teenage wheelchair tennis player from Long Eaton has won an award from Rotary International. Abby Breakwell started playing two years ago and has been recognised for being a positive role model to others. Quentin Rayner reports. So Abby, remember, every ball counts. 15-year-old Abby Breakwell has been using a wheelchair for two years and playing tennis ever since. She has a spinal and muscle-wasting disease for which there's no cure. But her tennis skills have already impressed and after being nominated by Long Eaton Rotary, she's been named Young Citizen Wheel Power Sports Award winner. I am absolutely honoured. I was very shocked when I found out about it and it was a great opportunity just to be nominated, let alone win. A family says the teenager wants to inspire others. Abby loves sport and she just wants people to have a go, that's her motto. Um, she's part of the This Girl Can campaign, she's an ambassador uh, for locally in Derbyshire. And she just wants people to have a go and see if they enjoy sport, just give it a go. Gordon Reid, a former Wimbledon champion, has given Abby his wheelchair to play in. My dreams as a tennis player is to go to the Paralympics and play at Wimbledon. It's um, been for a while something I'd like to do as I've been to Wimbledon and seen wheelchair tennis being played. It's been absolutely fantastic. I try and keep up right, up right there, here, and then go. Yeah, I think she's got every opportunity. She's represented England twice already. She trains so hard. She really does put the hours in. And ever since I've known the last two years, I think she's got a great attitude to, to go and deliver, and deliver in the sport that she wants to play. So it's really good. Abby will receive her award from Princess Anne this weekend and later this month will race in the London Mini Marathon. Quentin Rayner, BBC East Midlands Today, Nottingham. Congratulations, Abby. Well, Abby and the other young citizens will be meeting Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal this afternoon. I'd like to now invite the Director of Wheel Power, Debbie Hodge, onto the stage to present this award to Abby.
Thank you, Debbie. So, Abby, what does winning this mean to you? It's, I find it such an honour just to be nominated, and when I got put in, I didn't think I'd win. And when I got told, the person who nominated me was away. And then when I got told, I was like, what on earth? <laughs> now, why are you so passionate about tennis? You love it, don't you? Your coach was saying that you train so hard. I just find it's a way of me being me, because I used to be able to walk before my disability got worse. And it, I always found it difficult to keep up with the people in able-bodied sports. But then I found tennis, and I found no one stared, no one made fun of my splints or my wheelchair. And it just made like, life so much easier because people accept me for who I am. You're fantastic at it too. What are your ambitions? I really want to go to the Paralympics and represent Great Britain. And do you think you, you've got a good chance of getting there? I hope so. What to, what, how hard is the training? Tell us, give us the idea of what you do in a week. So, Monday's tennis, Tuesday's tennis and then karate, Wednesday's homework. <laughs> um, and in between tennis and all the other sports, we have to do homework in the car, and then whenever you've got time, just nip it in. Homework in the car, that's when you know you're busy. Well, congratulations, Abby, and best of luck. I'm sure this isn't the last we've seen of you on the tennis circuit. Thank you. Our final award goes to Jamala Osman. At the age of 14, Jamala was kicked out of her father's house after her mother died and she lost contact with her siblings. Growing up in Ilford in East London, she was surrounded by gang culture and violence and spiralled out of control. Playing up in school, she began suffering from depression. But she decided to take control of her life. Having reconnected with her siblings at the age of 18, she became a carer for her younger brother and twin sister, and her new responsibilities meant finding work. Within three months, she was accepted onto a highly competitive Barclays apprenticeship programme in 2012, with the company fully funding her degree. She became one of the youngest branch managers at age 21, going on to manage a branch in Covent Garden, and is considered one of the bank's most successful apprentices. Jamala is now age 24. She regularly speaks at schools about mental health to combat the stigma surrounding it and hopes her story can inspire others to make positive choices in their lives despite challenging circumstances. She was nominated by the Rotary Club of Redbridge. Congratulations to you. How do you feel? I'm, I'm, I'm really, really nervous, really, really excited. I'm just like a ball of emotions right now, so bear with me, thank you. You don't need to be nervous in front of this lot, does she? They're very friendly, they don't bite. <laughs> How does it feel to receive this award, though? Um, I'm, I'm really, really honoured. I'm really surprised, though, because compared to some of these guys, they've done some really, really incredible things. So I'm surprised. At the same time, I'm really, really honoured. Like, it does mean a lot to me um, and my local community as well, so I'm really grateful to to be receiving this award. You shouldn't be surprised. You've done some amazing stuff. Tell us about your family background. You didn't have the easiest start, did you? I think my story is not unique where I come from, and that's the saddest thing. A lot of us come from kind of um, not traditional family backgrounds growing up where we grow up. Like, there's not much income like in our, in our families and stuff. So my story is not unique where, where I come from. But a lot of us kind of find other ways to kind of compensate from what we don't have at home. So it kind of leads us in, in directions that are not suitable, but some of us don't really feel like we have a choice. Um, so growing up, it was difficult to kind of take that control back and not let society and the circumstances growing up in a rough part of East London kind of dictate my direction. It was kind of taking that back because a lot of us kind of grew up thinking like we'll never work in a bank, we'll never be able to we, like, live on estates that literally see Canary Wharf and we'll never believe that we'll be there. And literally within years I'm, I'm working there like in the head office, it's crazy. But that, it takes incredible maturity, I think, to be able to do that, you know? Did you, did you realise how, what, what a momentous thing you've done to break out and turn your life around in this way and be able to give back as well to your community? Yeah, definitely. I think, it's, I think it is really, really important to... Because a lot of us grow up without having role models and stuff like that, and I kind of found myself accidentally becoming a role model for my siblings. So, like, that responsibility for me, like, I didn't take that lightly. We don't have parents and stuff like that kind of telling us what to do. But I kind of saw the beauty in that, that my life is what I make it. So it's like, cool, I haven't 
got parents telling me what to do, I can be sad about that or I can be like, okay, cool. Like I haven't got anybody kind of forcing me to do anything. My life is what I make it. So <laughs> um, I kind of saw the, the positive side of, of everything. And it was just that thinking over years, it's, it's developed. Obviously you do find yourself like, when you suffer with mental health issues, like they don't go away, you just kind of learn to live with it. And I think it's that kind of level of thinking and kind of thinking outside the box and creating a life that is just different. Like it's, it's well, you've, different. you've done it, you've done it and you're giving back as well, which is fantastic. This is a very well-deserved award. Congratulations to you. Thank you so much. Aren't they wonderful? Every year they just get more and more amazing. Joining me now is the President of Rotary International in Great Britain and Ireland, Dennis Spiller. What was your reaction to hearing all of those incredible stories when you were listening backstage? Uh, well, you can't not be impressed, can you? Rotary is about opportunity and service, and here's a load of young people who have taken that opportunity to give service off their own bats, their own ideas, and everything else like that. And it's just superb. It really is inspirational. Why do you think it's important to recognise young people in this way and their positive achievements? Well, because positive is what we need, isn't it? And young people need a lot of positive strokes these days because there's, we, we all know what the society is like out there at the moment. So I believe that providing this platform to demonstrate what young people are capable of, some with major disadvantages as well, is, is an outstanding thing that Rotary can do. Indeed, Dennis Spiller, thank you very much. Thank you. So congratulations to all this year's winners who were nominated by Rotary Clubs across Britain and Ireland. Thank you for nominations too. I'm sure you'll agree it's been an incredible event, as it always is. Thank you very much for joining us.